Welcome back to another episode of the Jackie Service Show. I am so ready to dive into this one. When we were thinking about bringing guests onto the podcast, there was no other option on who our first guest was going to be other than Regina Lawrence. (laughs) Reg is one of my closest friends, and we essentially grew up in this entrepreneurial land together and have spent the last four years talking literally every day. And one of the things we always share when we're talking is if only people could hear these conversations, they would benefit. And so here we go. We're here to have a conversation today. No doubt we will talk about all the things, business, transitions, friendship, spirituality, health, and so much more. So my friend, Regina Lawrence, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that I'm your first guest. (laughs) My first guest, this is like, it was so meant to be, we were meant to be doing this together. But also if you had somebody else as your first guest, I would be like pretty offended. (laughs) (laughs) No doubt. You'd be like, um, excuse me, where was my invitation to do this recording? Duh. So I feel like you have a following of Canadians because we all love you. And Mm -hmm. I know we have been sharing each other's content and about each other for four years now on social media, but a lot of people don't know like your story Mm -hmm. and how you got here. So tell the people your story. How did Reg get into entrepreneur land? First of all, I'm really glad that you shouted out my uh, Z-list celebrity status in Ontario, Canada. Um, my podcast has a strange percentage of listeners who are in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Reg. <laughs> I love the, and you know what? I love a Canuck. Nothing makes me happier than a Canadian. Um, how did I get here? I got here a lot of ways. I am not from an entrepreneur family. Um, I'm not from a family that really higher education is really pushed and promoted. And I am from a family where seven of my nine siblings have had some sort of addiction issue. And so my place in my family is the codependent fixer and space holder. And so I grew up wanting to help to fix, to hold space, but I also had a deep knowing that I wanted my life to be different. My sisters all got married quite young, like in their early 20s and started making babies. And that's beautiful. That's what they chose. But mm-hmm. for me, I felt I like I didn't want to do that. There was something in my heart that said that's not what I wanted to do. So I went to law school, which is actually hilarious. Me saying that I wanted to go to law school was like Elle Wood saying she wanted to go to Harvard. Like, <laughs> like it was just and everyone was surprised. And so I ended up being a trial attorney and a litigator for seven years. I was a law professor at a big university on the East Coast and was so feeling so unfulfilled in my life. And I have this moment that I share where I'm in private practice. I'm sitting in my office. I'm from the outside at the peak of my career. I have the best cases. I have a great job. I have a partner who I'm living with who we have this great relationship and I am so anxious and so unfulfilled in the moment. And I have this massive panic attack on the floor of my office in a pencil skirt and a pair of Louboutins. And I just remember looking at my body as I was laying on the floor. And I remember looking up at the ceiling and saying, is this it? Like, Is Mm -hmm. this what my life is going to be? And I remember hearing a voice say, like, your life doesn't have to be this hard, but you're going to have to change your life. And I was like, well, what do I do? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it was like, you have to figure it out. And that was around 30, 31. And that's when I was like, I need to change my whole life. And so I went head first, first into like mindset work, Tony Robbins, then that snowballed into like my spiritual awakening. And in the midst of all of this, I knew I wanted to leave practice. I didn't want to live my life working for anyone else anymore. And I didn't want to build my time for anyone else anymore. And so from the time I laid on my office floor to the time I left practice was almost three years, um, two and a half, three years. And I left my practice. I was pushed out of my practice. Um, 
and decided to stop practicing law. It was like, it was like, it had to get so bad for me to actually leave. And I dove headfirst into entrepreneurship and didn't really know what I was doing and didn't have money saved and didn't have enough clients to cover my attorney salary, but I just dove into it. I tell the story a lot when people ask me how we met. I say, you know, like we met in what was my first mastermind. Was it your first mastermind too? Yeah. Yeah. So we met in our first mastermind. And um, for those listening, it was called Fast Foundations. Chris and Lori Harder put it together. And we were in the first cohort. And we, in that first day, we walked in and you just picked your seats. You just literally went and you found a seat and you sat down. And Regina Lawrence was sitting beside me. And we had to go up on, you know, in front of everybody and introduce ourselves in 90 90 seconds, seconds, 90 second, 90 second hot seats. We all pooped our pants. I think I threw up before I went up, (laughs) but they went by first name. So they went by like first initial. So I went before Reg. And when I sat back down, she looked at me and she said, we have a lot in common. I had shared my experience and my story around my brain tumor and being a you know corporate head of HR. And now here we were in this room, frankly, to me, what felt like the wild west. And I found another soul who came from some form of traditional background like I did. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, this is my girl. And I'm not kidding from that day forward. We have literally talked on the phone every day and grown yeah. our lives, our businesses, our relationships, our money, our health, our wealth, everything together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm it's just crazy. La- I'm laughing because I'm just thinking about like how much has changed in four years and like sitting in that room and like feeling the way we felt in our bodies to now where our businesses and lives are. It's something that I get asked a lot, and I would love you to expand on this or share your experience on this, which is that transition. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of friends that maybe they're still in some form of corporate career and they are unfulfilled and they know there's something more. And yet there's these essential golden handcuffs that feel like they're on them because they've been there for so long. It's almost just gotten they've gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's carrots that are dangled with long-term incentives and money on the table and all sorts of things that are really real and absolutely there. Talk about your experience in transition, because we've been through a lot, even in four years in entrepreneur land, but talk about your transition going from a traditional world to this world of entrepreneurship and like maybe give two or three key learnings that you learned about life in that transition phase for yourself. Yeah, a huge part of that transition is it's not like you're going from one job to another. You're actually going from working in the discipline of somebody else's structure to then having to create your own structure and discipline. So you have to unlearn a lot of things that you learned in in your corporate or legal practices. Um, you know, it, as a lawyer, I could show up at work. I knew my, my workflow was coming in. My clients were there. There was always stuff for me to do in entrepreneurship. You have to figure that out. You have to kill what you eat. You have to find clients. Like, especially when you're first starting, you have to learn how to wear all the hats. You have to learn how to market. You have to learn how to do all of these different things, even a little bit, even if you're going to eventually hire people to do these things for you when you first start you don't know what you don't know and you have a lot to learn. So I think the biggest thing for me, like when I look back is I wish I gave myself more grace Mm -hmm. because I, we, we literally were getting a master's degree in business. Um, I also, something that big that happens in the transition is in a traditional corporate structure. Now this is changing as we're moving forward. Um, you didn't build a personal brand in corporate, Right. Now right. companies are becoming wise to the fact that like their employees and their VPs and their C-suites should be building personal brands on social and LinkedIn. So we went from high, we, so we, when we were in practice and in corporate, we hid our lives. What we did outside of the office was kind of a secret. 
<laughs> and so then all of a sudden we joined this mastermind and we're so, supposed to be highlighting our lives on social media. And Jackie and I are like, this is trash. <laughs> like, 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 we don't want to do that. Like, 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 that's not what we are conditioned to do. We don't show our lives. So then that puts you in a position where all of a sudden you're like, well, who am I if I don't work in corporate and what do I like? Mm -hmm. And how do I show up and how am I perceived? What is a brand? You know, like you start to ask yourself these questions. So in addition to the unlearning, you now have to get to know yourself and learn at least pieces of all the parts of a business. So true. It's, it's such a wild ride going from, to your point, like one seat in a big organization to now essentially filling every box with my name in it. So I'm a people person. We talked about org charts on here already, but like every, every position in my company was me. Yeah. So me too. keeping finance, figuring out how to run a personal brand, social media, um, actually delivering the services I was delivering at the time. Yeah. It's, it all came back to the same place. Mm -hmm. And I know you and I have both through, so that was mass transition, obviously going from where we essentially quote unquote grew up to where we are today. But even in our four years of knowing each other, you and I have made a lot of transitions in entrepreneur land. We've yeah. made a lot of pivots and transitions to really find our voice and to figure out what we are meant to do in order to like serve and make the biggest impact in the world. Yep. What have you learned in entrepreneur transitions of trying something? reflecting and making those pivots or those changes into more aligned states of business for yourself? Yeah. Something I've learned is like, I'm very strategic in my brain. Like I'm always thinking about the strategy and the system and like how it's going to be done. I've had to learn how to trust my intuition. Like, mm. is this a full bodied? Yes. Or is this a full bodied? No. And sometimes I don't have to have a rational strategic thought process to go with it. It just is, or it isn't. That's been huge for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's massive. And I think all of the, for me, at least all the lived experiences lead me to, it's like one more step closer to what I've actually been meant to be doing in the world. It's recognizing that all of the steps had to happen for me to get to where I am today and yeah. not judging myself on feeling like externally I'm changing my business every year when frankly, not a lot of people really notice anyways. <laughs> and, and we put no. so much onus on that. We feel, we fear this judgment or we feel the fear this, what are people thinking where it's just our journey. We're just taking steps and strides toward what we're meant to do in the world. Well, and I also think about it like this. We're so hard on ourselves about pivoting and changing directions with our businesses and our brands. Like even like when you're coming up with like a niche statement for your social media. And like, I remember early on, like changing it a few times and being like, oh, people are going to be like, this girl's so flaky, blah, blah. One, nobody notices. Okay. <laughs> nobody notices the nuances. We think that we think it's always all about us and people notice everything and they don't. Um, but also when you think about, I like to look at like a big brand perspective. When you think about big brands, like big like general mills or like big food brands they come up with ideas and flavors and things all the time that just are a terrible idea <laughs> and then they don't work and then they flop and then they end up at the dollar store they tried it it didn't work they probably did a lot of market research and they were like people are gonna love pu pumpkin spice twix bars <laughs> but then <laughs> nobody wants it um so we're, we're allowed to do that as entrepreneurs. We're allowed to get an idea, think that it's the thing, try it. Maybe it's not. And then we pivot. That's yeah. like, and getting comfortable with pivoting, being like, I don't want to fucking do this, or this doesn't feel good, or this isn't making money. Like I'm going to switch to something else is mm -hmm. like, you have to give yourself permission to do that. Yeah. And for those that know human design, Reg and I are both manifesting generators and we can manifest with the best of them and we can generate with the best of them. Yeah, we can. And I talk, I talk about this a lot in terms of traditional models that we grew up in were very heavily attributed to maybe a more masculine traditional energy in that paradigm. 
And when we came into entrepreneur land, I know both of us went through a massive spiritual awakening and started to call in more aligned, soulful energy, more feminine energy into who we are as women, who we are as business owners, who we are in the world. Mm -hmm. And you are always somebody for me, that's like a token or pillar of that's what it looks like to run a soulful business. That would, that's what it looks like to stay authentically aligned to who you are. Yeah. Talk about that experience of actually pulling more of the feminine energy in and how that's actually created your now multiple businesses that you run. Yeah. So I spent my legal career, surprise, surprise, living in the masculine energy, the doing, the strategy, and also just the the legal world is male dominated. And I worked in a practice, both of my jobs were in male dominated practices. And so like, you're one of the guys, if you want to, you know, be a part of the crew, <clears throat> moving into business on my own, I had to learn that doing more doesn't mean more, it doesn't necessarily equate to more money and more success. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the midst of that, I've had to like, in the midst of this like soulful awakening, I've had to look at how I show up as a human. I have big energy, surprise, surprise. And the girl from Philly has big energy. (laughs) (laughs) I have big energy. And I started to pay attention to how that energy is received and what that energy looks like and what that energy feels like for other people. And that has helped me get more into my feminine flow. And just as an aside about femininity, like when we talk about feminine and masculine, it's not a lot of times people think like, oh, like Regina's feminine because she wears lipstick and she loves to wear dresses and jewelry and dress up. That's how I am. I was I was like that when I was a fucking bulldog in practice. I was the mm-hmm. same way and I was deeply masculine. Those things can help accentuate our femininity. But if feminine, but but deep, being deeply feminine is sitting and listening and having patience and not rushing to do the thing and finding flow and finding pleasure and finding joy. That's what femininity is for me. And so in running my business, it's been asking myself, how do I get to feel the best in my body and my business and flow? And who can I have come in to support me and do the very masculine things that take me out of the flow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've um, had a front row seat in your transition to building team and you're bringing people on and cultivating new culture, new team. Mm -hmm. First, I'd love you to explain to the listeners, like, what are your businesses? Because I'm not sure everyone fully knows what businesses you run. And then from there, we'll dive into team, but maybe let's start with just your businesses. Yeah. So I have three different businesses. I have a social media agency called All The Things Social. We run social media for entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small businesses. We work a lot with doctors and medical practices. And when I say we run social media, we do everything from video editing, copywriting, research on your brand posting all the things to grow on social media. My second business is in my spiritual awakening, something called breath work. If you've never heard of it ha- is something that has been really pivotal for me. So I am a breath work and a sound healing practitioner. Um, I also have a virtual breath work membership called breathe with Regina that people can log into twice a month to attend virtual breath work sessions with me. My third business is kind of a, a, it came off of the breathwork business. It's called the witch kit. The witch kit is a small ceremonial kit. This right now we have one called the basic witch, but there will be more. And it's a small ceremonial kit that helps you to create ritual wherever you are in your life to create a moment of white space, to drop in with yourself. And so it has different products in there just to help you start to create ritual and space in your everyday life. So those are the three separate businesses. And I can speak from lived experience that I actually have worked with Regina on both the agency side, the breathwork side, and now am a 
big fan of the witch kid. And in fact, the witch kit grew out of a conversation with Regina and I on a beach yeah. in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Was where that idea came a year ago. Out. Absolutely. It was like almost a year ago, probably to the date we were sitting on a beach in Fort Lauderdale and we always started our mornings with a ritual. We would start our mornings energetically cleansing ourselves and dropping into our bodies and Mm -hmm. being a bit more flowy and spiritual. And I said to Regina, I said, Hey, did you bring any sage with you? I just feel like I need to sage my body and like cleanse my energy. And she says, it's in my witch kit. (laughs) It's in my witch kit. (laughs) <laughs> and I said, what the heck is a witch kit? And I want one. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here in lies this now physical product that she's selling, which are these manifestation of essentially these kits that pull together like cleansing uh, an ability to cleanse your energy. And yeah. it's it's such a beautiful thing to see it come full circle. So That's I cool. have physically worked with you in the agency. Social media was a tool for me that I struggled with a lot. I didn't know how to show up. I'm not a, I know what I like when I see it, but I don't know how to create things graphically. Yeah. So I struggled with pulling the pieces together of social media. I struggled with finding my voice on the tool. Mm-hmm. And the minute that I hired your agency to come in and help with social media, it immediately lifted that stress off my chest. And it all of a sudden felt like I have to show up for really what's maybe 90 minutes a month to do interviews and to produce content like this. And I share it with your team. And now your team co-creates with me all this beautiful content that is out in the world. And the amount of people today that are like, Hey, I see you everywhere right now on social media is insane to me because of how little I'm doing in it, because I've now called in your team to be a part of my team to really help foster that. What is a tool to help get my voice out there? So it's a really cool agency. And that's the beauty of like having an agency come in and help you with your social media because it's it's not most people's zone of genius. It's not supposed to be, right? And we often, we get in our own heads and we're like, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to write. Does it sound good? Does it look good? Are people going to be interested in that? And so when you have a third party that can come in and can just pull the information from you and create for you in your own voice. Like that's the thing that has been, and you know, this is something I've worked through a lot is how do we really create a system and flow to capture the client's real voice when we build these brands. And so that's a flow I feel like we're getting and we've gotten really good at as an agency is like figuring out how to speak in the voice of the client and then create content so that you don't have to think about it. So you don't have to overthink and you just constantly have a flow. So people are saying, oh my gosh, Jackie, like I'm seeing you everywhere now. Yeah. I love it. It's been so, it's added so much ease into my life and it's created a sense of freedom. I did not know how much it was holding me down until you started this agency. And I was like, here, please help me because it is not my zone of genius. And then I'll just talk on breath for a second. Breath work, Regina is one of the most soulful and present breath work practitioners I've ever been with. And I have um, had the chance to breathe in multiple different styles with multiple different practitioners. And I've never felt so held in a room and so safe in a room to actually tap into what is going on within my physical body and what needs to come out, whether it's physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, but it always allows me to shift into another zone. And I've had a chance to breathe with you multiple times, whether it's on your group or at Fast Foundations Mastermind or on your, um, or individually, frankly. Mm -hmm. And breath to me is one of those modalities that really does help realign you and center you. It's such Mm -hmm. a beautiful experience. If you have not done breath before, what's the best way for them to try it? Yeah. I have a membership called breathe with Regina at breathewithregina.com, And you can sign up for a dollar for the first month and try it out mm-hmm. and see if it's a good fit for you. Yeah. Best dollar you've ever spent in your life. Go yeah. try it because it's one of those things that we can talk on and we can tell you about our experiences, but every experience is always different in breath. Yeah. And so you physically have to experience it to be able to understand the articulation of what the modality actually can do for you. Yeah. I always say to people, it is so different for everyone. People will like ask a lot of questions before a session, like, you know, like what's going to happen. I'm like, just do it. Like, 
do it or don't, but Mm -hmm. you're literally laying on a floor breathing and it's going to change your life. So try it, try it once and see how it goes. And if you don't like it, never do it again. But I've, I've never had somebody do breath work for the first time. That wasn't like, Oh my God. You know, it's really, it's the most powerful medicine and it's just with our own breath. I love that. I love that. So we, you're running all these businesses. You are a female entrepreneur Mm -hmm. for a while. We still have an org chart that has Regina's name all across the board. And it was a few years ago now that I remember us starting to have these conversations about who do I need to pull into my team? Who do I need to start to surround myself with to make this scalable and sustainable Mm -hmm. so that I can step into my zone of genius and live out what I'm meant to do in this world and continue to serve people with these businesses that I run. Yeah. Talk about your experience growing a team and Mm -hmm. what you've learned about yourself as a leader. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, like growing a team is a, it's a new challenge as an entrepreneur. And I actually think that most entrepreneurs fail because they don't take the time and don't have the patience and don't work with the right people to build a team. It is literally taking, when you're a solopreneur, you do everything yourself. You have your, whether they're written down or not, you have a system and process, you have a way that you do things and you have to figure out how do I get everything in here out and teach someone and be patient with them and work through the mistakes and work through your own mistakes and communication. Cause sometimes you communicate something and the person you're communicating and training hears something very different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really interesting thing. The other thing that I've learned as a female business owner, which is something I think a lot of male business owners could learn is there is an, there's a way of holding space for your team yeah. that it's more intuitive, I think, for women, for the feminine, not necessarily for women, but for like the feminine energy. And there is a certain way of holding space for your team that if you want them a part of your business and your mission for the long haul, you have to learn the art of holding space as a business Mm -hmm. owner. I love that. So I talk a lot about, it's not just, when we think about talent, it's not just hiring the right talent. It's also about how do we develop and retain. And in fact, I think the work actually begins when they start, right? So yes, we need to go find you epic people. That works a lot of the time. Sometimes that doesn't work and that's okay. And it's really about how do we develop and retain those people once they're in the door? Mm -hmm. What's something that you've learned in leadership that has helped develop and retain your team of women, to be honest, I have a team of women too, that you didn't, you never got when you were in, let's say um, a role where you had leaders all around you in corporate or as a lawyer, like what's one simple thing that you're like, now that I'm in charge of this and I get to create the culture, like this is how we're going to do it because I didn't like how it was over here. It didn't feel good in my body. Yeah, the ch- the check-in question that I ask my teammates every time I'm on calls with them is, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What level is your stress right now because of work and because of life? And if it's a 10 out of 10 because of work, my question is, how do I help you? Mm. That's the first thing. Um, the second question I ask my teammates pretty regularly is, Do you enjoy the work you're doing? Is there other work you wish you could be doing more of within the agency? One of the girls on my team was account managing, kind of doing a mix of like, she came in as as my assistant and then was doing account management. was kind of doing like a little bit of like odds and ends. And I said to her, what do you love to do? What brings you the most joy? And she said, I love editing videos and I love doing graphic design. And so- you know, you've seen it, Jax, like we've loaded her up with mm-hmm. video and graphic design and she's so good at it. Like, right. And yeah. it's the thing that makes her really happy is doing that. She's like, I love doing it because I love learning. I love watching these videos and learning from the people and creating videos for them. Like it's, I just really love to do it. So I think it's like, we have to be checking in with our team first 
both as humans, how are you doing? But then also like, how are you doing in the work you're doing for me? Because if they really hate the job that they're in, but they're like, or they hate some of the tasks that they're doing, is there a way that there's somebody else on the team that maybe likes those tasks better and we can kind of move it around a little bit? I think the most important thing for me that just resonated with what you just said is asking questions. So I think often in leadership, we come from the place of, oh gosh, our friend Jackie Coke has a, has a podcast that's called, oh shit, I'm the boss now. So <laughs> it's that, it's that energy of like, oh shit, now I'm the boss. I have to have it all figured out. And I have to have everything ready for these people that are going to come into my team. And the thing that gets missed, because that's a little bit more of a masculine energy of like, I have to, it's ego, right? I have to figure this all out so that the team can be successful. Whereas when we flip that on its head and actually say, what if I just ask my team what they need in order to be successful? It takes the weight off our shoulders as leaders mm -hmm. in the company, because now we're involving them in the solution instead of creating the solution that we think is going to work best for our team. Yeah. So in that case, you know, one of your team members is now thriving and I'm seeing the work quality as a result of it as a client of yours. And it's insane. Like you can just tell she's in an in energetic alignment because of what she's putting out in the world. Totally. And the ripple of that is not just for her. It's for you as a leader. It's for your clients who is me sitting here. It's mm -hmm. for everybody engaging with my content. Yep. So it's so much bigger than just the questions you're asking. It's allowing you to cultivate a completely different culture as a female business owner versus us having worked in more masculine dominated environments in our past. Totally. One of my pillars of life is I really try to be radically honest about everything. Yeah. And I am radically honest with my team. Like if I'm stressed and having a hard time. I'm not hiding that from them. I'm not taking it out on them, but I'll say like, I'm having a hard time right now. I'm really stressed. Like I was with one of the girls. That's one of my good friends that works with me the other day. And we were co-working together and I like looked at her. And I was like, I'm in a really bad mood. <laughs> And she was like, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit of an edge from you today, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I feel the freedom to talk to them, like, and to share with them where I'm at. I share with them constantly the vision for the business and like what I want to do and how I want to grow. And, and also like, they're a part of that vision. And so I share that with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. All right, Miss Regina Lawrence. I have a question for you as we start mm -hmm. to wrap here today. And because you are all the things, your literal branding is all the things. You mm -hmm. are soulful, you're sexual, you're smart, you're sassy, you're, you genuinely step into who you are in an, an, in a authentic way. My question for you is, what is one thing that most people don't know about you? Mm. Okay. Two, there's a couple of things that most people don't know about me. Um, I'm quite introverted. I mm -hmm. like to be alone and I like to be quiet. People mm -hmm. are very, I was having coffee yesterday morning and I said to the guy I was having coffee with, like, I'm actually an introvert. And he was like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, really? Like, I like to be alone and I like quiet. Um, Something else that people I think don't know about me is that like, I, people sometimes, because I'm very Virgo, I'm a Virgo, I'm an Enneagram three, like I am a perfectionist. I like aesthetically pleasing things. I like to show up looking aesthetically pleasing. Like I'm very girly. Like my eyelashes are always done. My nails are always done. Like my weave is always done. Like, you know, but like I like anyone, I'm kind of a hot mess. Like, and, and people assume like that it's just easy for me or mm. that life is easy or business is easy. And some things come to me with ease because of my background and my education and the way my brain works. But like, 
I'm a hot mess sometimes and it's not always easy for me. And I make lots of mistakes and I've made lots of mistakes and have had lots of lessons in business. And I've pivoted 35,000 times, but I just never stop. Like, and Mm. I never, and I don't dwell on it, but like, I, I mean, some, there's some weeks I literally cry every single day in my bathtub. Like, yeah. Truly, I'm deeply sensitive. Something that is not understood about Virgos is that we are the wateriest earth sign. And I'm a double Virgo. I got a Virgo sun and a Virgo moon. And so we are very misunderstood. So I'm very sensitive. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm very ditzy. Sometimes I do and say things and I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) All right, Elle Woods, bend and snap, right? Like a hundred, a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I always love to hold space for people to share who they really are, Mm -hmm. even though on the external world, sometimes we don't get to pick these things up, right? Sometimes we don't see that. So I love, I love you sharing a bit more about who you actually are. Hmm. All right, my love, where can people find you? How can they join breathe with Regina? Where's the best place to hang out and connect with you online? Yeah. So my website is reginalawrence.com. There's a link there to the breathwork membership. There's a link there to the agency. You can find all of those things. There's a link there. If it's not there yet, it should be there by the time this episode is live to take you to the witch kit. Um, I hang out on Instagram a lot at Regina A. Lawrence, and I newly hang out on TikTok a lot. I think I'm really funny on TikTok and that's Regina. Lawrence. (laughs) I love that. You also have a podcast. We'll link up all of the details in the show notes here. What's the podcast so that they can go listen to some of your episodes as well. It's called all the things with Regina Lawrence. And I literally talk about all the things, psychedelic medicine, sex, dating, relationships, spirituality, business, branding, all the things that make me happy, holistic health, all of it. I love it. Podcast. I love it. Thank you so much for being my first guest on the Thank Jackie you for Silver having Show. me as your first guest. <laughs> it feels, I mean, it was needed to happen and we'll obviously have you back. Um, as I know, we have so many other topics we can dive into and really share on because we're having these conversations on a daily basis. I know it's just so fun to be able to share them with our people and yeah. share it more openly in the world. But thank you so much for being here. I have so much love and gratitude for you in my life and can't wait to the next time. Love you. Thank you.